We have another question, and it's also an equation. So let's write that off. So here they are giving us, we have an AC generator. We have an, we have an AC generator. Already know AC is alternating current. And already when you are working with this, you need to know what type of products does it have. AC generator, and it is producing, it is producing a maximum, a maximum, a maximum voltage. And you'll see that these questions are more or less the same of 320 volts. And it is connected, it is connected. And this time it is connected to a heater, connected to a heater. And this heater has a resistance of 35, and we have a funny looking sign, which we call ohms. So now the first question, question number one says, what is the structural difference between AC and DC generator? I'm just gonna write difference and then we're gonna talk about it so we don't waste time. Difference of an AC generator, AC generator and a DC, a DC generator. Okay, just in, just in case for somebody who just joined us, if we have a DC generator, we use split rings. Remember I showed you that there's a split in between it, or you can also call it a commutator. A commutator. And when we talk about an AC generator alternating current, we have a slip ring. The current slips. I think going, taking you back, if you've just joined us, Bendula asked a question where we had to look at the differences between an AC generator and a DC generator. We came up that they both use Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. They both convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. However, the one is alternating current, which is AC. The other one is direct current, which is DC. And then the one uses a split ring and the other one uses a slip ring. And then the other difference that we looked at, when we have to plot it in a certain graph, then we can see that alternating current will use, we will have a sine graph, whereas the other one, we will not have a sine graph. Remember the one, the current will alternate, meaning the current will change every half turn, where in a direct current, the current will remain uniform throughout. So that is the differences, that's the differences. Again, we don't have a mark allocation for here, so we can't really go too much into detail. So then the next one, it tells us to calculate let me work here so that I can have more space. It tells us to calculate. It says we must calculate. And this is the first one. It, they tell us to calculate the RMS, RMS of the voltage, of the voltage. So here we have all our information required. We have the maximum, so this is Vmax which is 320, it is connected to a heater with a resistance of 35. And then they're telling us to calculate the RMS voltage. So this one is pretty easy. Remember RMS, VRMS is equal to Vmax over the square root of two. They've given me my maximum. They say maximum is 320 all over the square root of two. This one is very easy. You cannot get this one wrong. Let's see what we're gonna get here. So at the top, I'm going to have 320. At the bottom, I'm gonna have the square root of two, and I get 226.27. Remember to always round it off to two decimal places as your final answer. I have 226.27, and that is in volts. And then another thing to remember, guys, when you are giving SI units, it's very, very crucial and important that you use the correct SI unit because the examiner wants to see whether or not you understand the different types of SI units. For an example, in this case, if you were to use a small v, that means velocity. So you say we have 226.27 velocities. No, it doesn't work like that. We are talking about voltage, which means we have a capital V, which represents volts. That's how we measure voltage. So be careful because you can go through negative marking if you do not know the SI units, or you can just get everything incorrect because you, it means you do not know what you are talking about. So make sure with the crucial points. The next question that we have here, let me work here. We must calculate the RMS value, the RMS value 
of the current, of the current in the heater, of the current in the heater. Okay, let's take that down. Just read quickly our VMAX. So we've got our VMAX, we've got our VRMS. They told us our heat has a resistance of 35. So then you go find a formula where you can use all that you're given. Let's see, looking at my, so I'm looking for my IRMS value for the current. Looking at my formula sheet, I can say IMAX, right? Because if I'm looking for IMAX, I'm given VMAX if I'm looking for current, and that is all over my resistance. I am given my VMAX, which is 320. The current of my heater is 35. Now, if I can find my IMAX, I can then find my IRMS because then it's just over a square root of two. So let's see what I'm gonna get there. Okay, just cancel that. So at the top, I'm gonna have 320. The resistance of the, of the heater is 35, and that gives me 9.14. The two does not change the four, so it just, it just remains 9.14. I'm gonna have 9,14. Remember, current, we use an ammeter, and it's, it's measured in amperes. So that is my I, IMAX, but I'm looking for my IRMS. Then I can take this further to say, if I'm looking for IRMS, I must first have my IMAX all over the square root of two. Take this down. I'm gonna have nine comma one four all over my square root of two. And let's see what we get here. Here's my calculator. So now let me just do it the long way around so that I don't confuse anyone. So we have 9.14 all over my square root of two. That gives me a current of 6.4. 46, the two does not change the six, so I leave it at that. So I'm gonna have 6.46, and that is in ampere. So that is, so first, I first had to find my IMAX because I was given my VMAX, so I had to work backwards. But let's see how else can I do it again. So if I can say or, let me just use a different color. Looking at my formula sheet again, I can say, if I'm looking for my IRMS, I can say VRMS over my R. Now, why I'm taking VRMS is because in the first question, they called, they asked us our VRMS, right? This is the 226.27. But now, guys, a trick question here when it comes to physics. Though you do get continuous marking. So, for example, if your, v, if your VRMS was incorrect, but you use it correctly in the equation that I'm going to use it now, you do get marks. But then again, if you feel like, nah, I might be wrong and you really need the marks, rather use an, a formula where everything you are given, like the first one, we, were, we had IMAX, we had the resistance, and then we just had to plug in. So if your VRMS is incorrect, I would then suggest don't use this way. But in case you, it is correct, let's see if we're going to get the same thing so that we see whether we're getting the same thing or not. So my VRMS is this one. I calculated it as 226.27 all over. The resistance of the heater is 35. Let's see if we get the same answer. So we should get the same answer. So we're doing a young prayer right now. We have 226.27, and then we have a resistance of 35. Voila, and then we get 6.46. So, so we have 6,46. And remember, when we calculate IRMS, it is measured in a capital A, which is amperes.